One of the best ways to make your playing more interesting is to add dynamics. Dynamics is how loud or quiet you're playing each different strum, and by playing with different dynamics, you can make the exact same strumming pattern go from a boring robotic sound to a very vibrant, interesting, and full strumming pattern. So that's what we're going to be exploring in this video, how to make your strumming patterns more interesting with dynamics. This is going to be the fourth video in my How to Make Your Strumming More Interesting series. If you haven't watched the first three videos, they're going to be important to start with. Check them out in the link in the description below this video. Watch them and then come back to this video and it'll make a lot more sense. And if you have, let's get into it and make our strumming really interesting. Dynamics are extremely important in your guitar playing and they're basically just how loud or quiet you're playing each individual strum. And you kind of look at it on two levels. First is in the actual strumming pattern itself. Which notes are you strumming loudly and full and which are you doing quiet? And varying this can add a lot of dimension to your playing. The second is section by section. So typically a verse you'll play quieter and calmer and then as you build up to the chorus which will be the loudest, fullest, most energetic part of the song. This isn't always the case, but that's often a guideline. And so looking at a song section by section will help you make your strumming more interesting by varying your energy or loudness and volume of playing based on what the section sounds like. So dynamics, like anything in music, is completely subjective. You can make any note as loud or as soft as you want, and it's technically right. But there are some things that we're used to hearing more than others in popular music or songs that you enjoy. And knowing some of these guidelines is going to make it easier for you to apply dynamics to your playing and have it sound intentional as opposed to that a note that you messed up on. So let's get into it with the tip number one, which is going to be playing the first beat louder. So you've heard me say this before, but that first beat being emphasized is a very common thing. It's what gives us that driving root force of the rhythm. And so often if we play the beat one the loudest, it's just going to sound natural and make a very simple strumming pattern just more interesting. So just switching on a very simple example of a G, D, E minor here, I'm just going to play literally one and two and three and four and, but make beat one louder than the rest. And it's going to make it more interesting. So right there, that was the simplest strumming pattern that you can play, one and two and three and four and. But you can hear how much more weight that carried, especially on that E minor, when you have that loud booming chord and then the nice soft gentle ones. So adding dynamics very simply into a very simple strumming pattern can make it entirely different and have a lot more impact than it would otherwise. Now, another thing to note here is that playing loud isn't always about just playing physically louder. It's also how clear and how many strings that you play. So if everything rings out clearly and you're playing all six strings, it's just naturally going to be a lot louder. Here's another example of getting a really loud full first beat is playing our swing pattern from earlier and just making sure that first beat is nice and full and clear and rings out loudly. So you can hear right there, that adds even more swing to it because now we're swinging with our timing, but then we're also kind of swinging with this loud, soft, loud, soft. So it makes it even more interesting. Moving on, the next simple thing we can do to add more dynamics is play one chord louder than the next chord. If I take our strumming pattern on G, D, A minor, C, and I play this first chord nice and loud, and then when I switch to the D, play that nice and softly, then I'm gonna play the A minor a little bit louder, the C even a little bit louder, and that's gonna bring back to the G being the loudest. So you can see with that how when I have that loud first bar and then it goes really quiet, and then you get gradually louder. You can add a lot of different dynamic elements to your playing and you can give kind of a up and down kind of pulsing motion to your entire chord progression. 
Our first chord really stands out there in this case and we're kind of building up to it. So we've got this interesting motion of getting gradually louder, which just adds another element of dynamics to your playing. So another example of a cool thing we can do is a slash strum, which is just really a really fast, louder strum. Just one single strum that we want to emphasize, one chord that we want to emphasize, and then just adds a sudden boost of energy that you weren't expecting to make things just more interesting. And then the other chords are all relatively the same volume. So taking our one and two and a three and a four strumming pattern on the same chords as we were just playing, it'll sound like this. So there you can see that one chord of every bar, we've got it much louder, and then we go back down to a volume, and you get that one accented chord that kind of adds this rhythmic beat on top of our strumming pattern. All right, so the next cool technique that we can add in is the swish. So all that is, is when you have a one and two strumming pattern, that just occasionally you skip the end of the one and hold out that one beat for the entire thing, and then you come in again on a two. This kind of breaks up the rhythm a little bit. So instead of having this consistent motion, you just change it up every so often, and that's gonna throw the listener off guard and make your strumming pattern more interesting. So just by doing that, by taking out a strum every so often, you just make it a lot more interesting and make it feel like there's a lot more going on than there is. Every single time I was playing almost the identical strumming pattern, I just every so often took out a single note. So then you can bring multiple of these techniques together. Say you want to throw in a swish every so often and have that slash beat played, then suddenly it's a lot more interesting of a strumming pattern. Another cool trick is to replace one of your chords entirely with just picked out notes. You don't even need to keep your strumming pattern, you just need to stay on rhythm so that you can come back with the next chord in time. So if I'm going from D to A to E on a strumming pattern, I'm just going to replace the E with some picked out notes. And there you have it. Hopefully you can see that by adding interesting dynamics, interesting strumming patterns, and unique techniques all together, you can make those same old boring strumming patterns far more unique and interesting to listen to, all while using the exact same chords as you already know. There's a ton of variety that we've covered in these videos in this series. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're able to make your strumming patterns or at least have a lot of an idea. We've covered a lot of different stuff in this video series. I hope you've learned how to make your strumming a lot more interesting or at least come up with a lot of ideas to try. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button, say hi in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you get future videos. If you wanna work on your chords and strumming, make sure to check out my 14 day chord challenge in the link in the description below this video. It's really gonna help get you clear and fast chords. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.